Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Now my last video on three ply cordage generated quite a lot of interest from people wanting to know about handling other plies as well. So today we've done a very, very quick video. It's not very elegantly filmed, I'm afraid, uh, but we are going to have a look at a couple of different ways of making four ply cordage. In the immortal worlds of Spike Milligan, string is a very important thing. Rope is thicker, but string is quicker. So let's just have a quick recap and look at the differences between string, rope, and then go on to the different plies. So most of you who have made corded will have learnt the reverse twist. There's also thigh cordage, but today we're really looking at reverse twisted cordage. This is something that's in lots of my other videos, lots of other places as well. Very straightforward to do. Two strands, twist one away, cross it towards you. Twist away, cross towards you. Now this makes a good, practical, everyday cord. It's very easy to do. You can make miles and miles and miles of it. Why might you want a different number of plies though? Well, if you imagine cutting a cross section through this, turning it up on its end, you're going to have a figure of eight where you have two bundles lying next to each other. Now, that's perfectly strong in most situations, but that figure eight means that you've got high spots which can rub and a cord is only as strong as the weakest points on it. So for some purposes, and this is what we did in the previous video, there's a three ply cordage is more useful. And the oldest cord we currently have in existence is a three ply cord. That's from a Neanderthal site in France, 50,000 years old. So this is made exactly the same way. Three strands, top one twists away, comes all the way down to the bottom. Top one twists away, cross all the way down to the bottom. I'm not going to spend much time on this because that's what my previous video is all about. But twist away, cross all the way down. So it's just as straightforward to do. It takes a moment or two longer to get the feel for the order until you can do it on autopilot. But once it's done, it's a very, very round, smooth cord. And that immediately makes things a little bit stronger, a little bit more abrasion resistant. Four ply is done in exactly the same way. In this case, I've got the same size bundle of fibres as the last two. I've split them into four sections. Let's just redivide those up again. And I'm going to lay them in exactly the same way. Still a reverse twist cordage. Twisting the top one away, bringing it all the way down to the bottom. Now this is the top one. Twist that away. Bring it all the way down to the bottom. Twist away. Bring it all the way down to the bottom. So nothing difficult about this, but it is quite easy to end up confusing the order. So you do have to think about how you hold your hands. There's no right or wrong way as long as it works for you and keep things in order. And you might also have noticed this is a bit slower. I definitely find this a slower one to do. It's a very beautiful cord. Let's have a good look at it. It makes a very, very round, very smooth cord. There's no lumps or bumps on this, so it's going to be very abrasion resistant. If any one strand starts to fray, you've got a hugely strong element within it. And this is why most ropes are made up of multiple plies. Now, there are technical names for the way we talk about rope, taken from more recent history. So a three strand laid rope is often called plain laid or hawser laid. A four strand one would more often be called um, shroud laid. However, in bushcraft and living history and experimental archaeology terms, we're often not quite as technical in our terms. So we'd pretty much refer to both of these as laid ropes and that's fine that's absolutely fine you can be as technical as you like you're not going to be wrong to be very precise about it but I think the vast majority of people would understand what you meant if you said it was a three strand laid rope or a four strand laid rope these are quite thin these are still technically cord the only real difference between cordage and rope is the thickness and there is a bit of a judgment call as to when one stops being one and becomes the other. 
Now, oh, did I get in the middle muddle there? Sometimes you just have to look at it and go, what happened? Where do things go? There we are, that's fine. You definitely need to use a little bit more attention when you're working on this particular method. There is another method as well. If we go back to the two ply cord that I was warming up with at the beginning, again, making this an endless amount, twist away, cross down, twist away, cross down. If you take an existing length of cordage, in this case it's two ply, but it doesn't really matter what number of plies there is, but two ply for the sake of argument, because we want to end up with a four ply. And I'll just work on a bit in the center so that you can see clearly what's going on. If you twist this even more tightly, in the direction of the ply so that it really, really tightens up on itself. And you keep twisting pretty much so it starts cockling and folding by itself. Fold that in half, let the twist reverse on itself, and you can do this in very long lengths by hooking it over something and twiddling the ends. Well, this is also a four ply cordage and most terminology would refer this to this as cabled. So in more technical rope making terms, any rope made from already plied cords is a cabled rope. We're just using a very simple two ply doubled makes four ply cabled. This is really, really easy to do. You've got that autopilot element of being able to make two ply cordage almost without looking at it. When you need something stronger, twist it up a bit more tightly, fold it in half, make sure the twist is settled nicely and you've got a four ply cordage. Let's compare the two. They are different thicknesses now, of course. This has a more knobbly, almost braided look to it. This has a smoother, rounder look. If I was making a very, very refined cord, maybe to put a very precious pendant on, this is the one I would go for. If I just need to double up some cord so that it's very, very strong and I'm minimising the weak spots, balancing out the stresses within it, but I want it to be quite quick, this is the one I'm going to go for. Makes sense? It's really not that complicated. Both are perfectly valid cordage methods. I've seen far less four ply laid cord in early archaeology than I have three ply and two ply. You know, our early ancestors aren't daft. If it takes a huge amount of effort, use a simpler version wherever you need to. But for very, very big heavy projects. Cabled is probably the way to go. Now there are a couple of other ways of dealing with four plies and they're braiding methods. I'm going to deal with those in the next video. Amazingly there is evidence of prehistoric four ply rope making out there. I've attached a screenshot of just a Google image search on this site and I'll put a link to just one of the news articles about it in the description at the beginning. But this is a truly fascinating thing and strongly supports the idea that people 40,000 years ago are making advanced four-ply cordage and rope. So there we go, two ways of making a four-ply cordage. You can either lay individual strands by the usual reverse twist method or you can start with a length of cordage which you then fold and twist back on itself as need. Both ways work perfectly well. See what's more useful for you in a day-to-day -day basis. Next video will be on braided four-ply cords and until then, bye for now.